In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. Bro, that looks like a turtle. I don't know if this is from a movie or if this is a real island that has a turtle face on it. I know there's people that say that there's a turtle island, but that was a face of a turtle, a big one. <laughs> In this video, Shane talks about the link between beetle wings and levitation. Make sure you watch to the end and let me know what you think in the comments below. What possibly could beetle wings have in common with levitation technology? I'll wait until you see this. We're going to watch a video in a second, but just to start, Viktor Rabenikov was a Russian scientist and entomologist. Entomology is to do with insects. So while studying these insect wings and beetle shells, he discovered interesting patterns that exhibited some strange tendencies. With these beetle shells, he discovered an anti-gravity effect, a bio-anti-gravity, biological. And essentially, these wings would repel each other, and he could actually get one to kind of balance in the air above another one. So it's sort of magnetic or magnetism. According to the story, he strapped thousands of beetle shells onto this craft and was able to levitate. And of course, all of his designs and information was confiscated by the Russian government and it was all shut down. But just so you know, I'm sourcing Wikipedia here because the fact checkers sourced Wikipedia when they fact checked me on my Bosnian pyramid video. So come on. The, the bug wings themselves uh, were creating an anti-gravity phenomenon under certain conditions. And of course, what we have here, if, if you analyze, it's actually a beetle. And if you analyze this bug structure, you see a hexagonal pyramid structure array throughout the entire bottom wing of this bug. And uh, anyway, he took a whole bunch of these bug wings and he glued them to like a Venetian blind structure. I do not necessarily believe in the anti-gravity aspect of it. It is a cool theory and I'm doing a little bit more research as to if this is true or not. Apparently, certain types of beetle do have a form of electrostatic that keeps their wings at a certain level from hitting each other. They cause a level of static. From what I've been reading online, I, I don't know if it's true or not. But it just makes more sense that the pyramids were built with these types of bugs because there's so much of them in the countries that they are found in. But it is a crazy theory to think about. Let me know in the comments on your opinions because I know a lot of people probably disagree with it. Place it with the Federal Reserve. Why? Because all of your assets will no longer be a tangible asset hear this? in your wallet, like a $10 bill. Instead, your assets will be a line of software and therefore open to AI the is taking over, dog. drained, garnished, or entirely wiped out by the government or AI any is taking controlling over. authority. So again, your privacy will and be the completely people up in the house. along with your financial freedom. I mean, it's so scary. And Monica, we this isn't like some fantasy. This has is already happening in China. And as, as you mentioned, WEF and other organizations are pushing us toward this. Give um, our, our viewers an example of how their freedom could be curtailed through this now not uh, this cashless society. So if you do what, they can do what. Yeah, exactly. So again, this is about power and control only. And if the government has control over your assets, they have control over you. Right. And it gets back to the social credit score system. So let's say a government, the U.S. government, decides that you have overstepped your carbon emissions mm. on any given month. Well, if we have a fully digitized financial system, then the government then has the right or will have the right to go into your savings account, your bank account, and either tax you or uh, prevent you from buying gas for the rest of the month for your car or airline tickets to fly anywhere in the country or in the world or lock you out of your account completely. Again, this is a totalitarian system. And I must say that the Biden administration, the Treasury Department, my old stomping grounds, they've had a pilot program, Rachel, studying this 
since January of 2021 when they came into office. Other Western governments are doing the same Got thing. But the me, good man. news is that more and more people across the West are waking up to this. And there is some pushback. So about two weeks ago, the Irish government passed a rule requiring businesses to take cash. So again, there is some hope out there as more and more people across the West get educated about the dangers of this. Yeah, we need to become educated. And In the times, the people. World. They want to control you. Just look at what's happening. Food, energy, currency. If they got you on those, they basically got you in a digital prison. Um, they've got control over your life and you will become dependent on them and their new Chinese style social credit score system. Monica, you have been sounding the alarm on this for a long time. Thank you for the information. We really want our viewers to understand what our overlords um, uh, want or what they have in store for us. Um, and we need to push back. So thank you, Monica, for joining us. They look like they were enjoying the last bit of that conversation a little too much for a, such a serious topic. There needs to be limits to what can be done by the government. And turning it into a complete digital currency is really scary. And it's just going to be a bad time for people that want to have control over their money because they will no longer have direct control over it. They could lose it at any minute. And that's not good. That's a really scary future to look forward to. Wait. Why is it? I'm just trying to hunt. Uh, nah, this sucks. I can't even. I really don't even know how this ended up in my likes, but I find this extremely funny because sometimes when I'm at work, I wear boots and, uh, my toes will bother me and I'm fine throughout the whole day until I notice my toes are a little uncomfortable in my boots. And then it's just like, I can't stop wiggling them and trying to separate them. It makes me extremely uncomfortable. So I guess that makes me a neurodivergent maybe. I don't know, but it is really relatable. This is. Let's talk about these spherical UFO drones that are out here spying on you. The past few years, there has been a massive influx of spherical flying objects called UFOs or UAPs in an attempt to make them seem otherworldly, when in reality, they're not. Almost two years ago, I released a video about optically invisible flying spheres being used for surveillance. This technology is sometimes called Camellio technology. Remember that because you'll hear it in the future, and you heard it here first. This drone is a really interesting piece of technology, and it's outlined in a fairly recent paper from Singapore University. And it's propelled by something called the Coanda effect, which is the movement of air over a convex surface. Really cool and novel stuff, but 100% human. But this shiny metallic drone looks just like the mysterious spheres that are being seen in Pentagon videos and surveillance footage from all over the world in recent years. So let's see what all the UFO talking heads have to say about this. I briefed 312 heads of state, six chickens, and the Pope about the benevolent sky spheres. They're the Galactic Federation, but you need to ascend to 5D. <laughs> Balls. Someone said there was a Kager, and my dad totally owns a dealership. Whoa, hey, 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 whoa, 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 leave us yeah, out of this. Oh, no, oh, hell no. Oh, don't spill the beans. Wow. Technology like this is nothing new. I just think it's starting to become more public and visible. So instead of admitting that foreign governments, our government, and private interests are flying invisible surveillance platforms over us that we can't see and they can't stop, they are using UFO lore as strategic propaganda to desensitize you and make you look the other way. If you want to read this paper for yourself, you can find it in the article section on my website. And when these finally start coming out into the public and they actually start admitting what they really are, remember, Museum of Tarot told you first. Man, yesterday I was talking about how I see orbs in the night sky almost every single night and in the morning. And it, this kind of discourages me a little bit because what if that is the case? You know, it probably is some kind of government tech that they're trying out. I actually live about 60 miles away from a very well-known military base. And uh, <laughs> I often wonder if maybe they're just testing out some new technology because it's pretty wild looking to see with your, real, with your own eyes to see the things that are moving up there, the way that they're moving. It's pretty 
crazy. One of the most startling of all of the artifacts, and that's the Delk print. The Delk print has a dinosaur print and then the human print right next to it. Do you see it? Do you see the big toe right there and the toes following it? How this is impinging on this or is this impinging on that? We'll have more information on that. That is called the Delk print. These right here, you could easily skip over and say, oh, okay, nice little, nice, nice little jars. But no, there is a baby dinosaur on one of them. You've got a squirrel right there. And you've got a frog right there. But that, my friends, is a dinosaur. And this is 1200 AD from Central America. Talking about something that should not be there. In the sandstone, um, which is even older than um, Cretaceous limestone, is an alleged, <laughs> I think it goes beyond alleged, handprint. So this push in, person pushed off of the ground. The majority of the weight was right here. It's deeper. And my hand just barely fits in there. Again, that shouldn't be there considering the age of the rock. Now, the, the solution to having dinosaurs and humans together or handprints or footprints in rock that are allegedly 100, 200, or even 500 million years old can all be resolved if one looks at the worldwide flood 4,500 years ago as a geological anomaly, really, with intense amount of geological activity accelerating some of these processes, and you can have humans and dinosaurs in the same place 4,500 years ago and have a handprint in sandstone mud that then hardens and then masquerades as something that's 200, 300 million years old today. I really enjoy watching these types of videos. It, it kind of drives me crazy when scientists say, oh yeah, there wasn't human life when the dinosaurs roamed the world. It's just like, why? Why couldn't have there been? And then they say that, you know, we were a form of like a, a rodent type creature that we evolved from. And it's just like, nah, it always drives me crazy when scientists say this, but then in the same regard, they get something that's so unexplainable that they're like, well, that's just a freak of nature. What? No, it's a totally explainable thing. There was humans in the dinosaur era, and you are wrong about saying that there weren't humans in the dinosaur era. There was definitely humans. There had to have been. I think, I personally am one that thinks that human species has always been on this planet. Like, ever since life has been on this planet, humans have been a part of that life. It's not just been a slow development of humans becoming a thing a few hundred thousand years ago. Humans, I think, have always been here. How, I do not know. If Whether it's evolutionary evolving, or we were put here by a god, or if we were put here by aliens, but humans, I think, definitely were here always and to say that you know oh it's not possible and things like that like we don't know there's no evidence otherwise other than science that can still be bunked by findings and then they just chop it up as oh it was a fluke but hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel i only ask once per video and i make a video like this almost every day Volcanoes are not natural. We was told in school that this is a volcano and that something weird happens under the earth with the tectonic plates that rises and cause the volcano to explode. That ain't what the fuck that is. This is the ash remains from the giant machines they use after cutting the trees when they was sawing the trees down. If you ever seen a tree machine that they used to saw the trees to saw trees down with, as trees are getting sawed down. On the back of that machine, it's letting out all type of dust that is pouring onto the ground. Just like when your ass barbecuing. So what, what they taught us was a volcano is nothing more than the acidic remains from the giant machines they had. And these remains just sit there. And since these, these remains had chemical compounds in them, what happens is over time, the chemicals from these remains, these is nothing but an ash pile, people. Imagine a giant machine. This ain't A volcano was nothing but an ash pile. This is how they hide the truth in plain sight. More trichnology, because we don't know about the giant trees and the giant machinery. So we think a volcano's exploding. A volcano ain't shit, but the ash remains from the machines they used to cut our spiritual giant trees down.
All right. So that's why every now and then the acidic remains rise and explode and create this effect, what we call a fucking volcanic explosion, which is nothing more than all the acids boiling up over the years and exploding. Because you got to remember, them bitches only been here 500 years. All right. So that ain't shit but the remains. All right. When shit get the, that's all it is. All right. So it's not, that's why I got a little hole on the top. Just like a fucking ant here. You know what I'm saying? I didn't quite grasp everything that he was saying, but it did leave me to my own theories that I like to come up with. Actually, it's a theory that I've thought of for quite a while. I used to, as a kid, think that the earth was hollow. I used to think, oh, well, that this is where a factory is, and that's how they exhaust all of their energy from the factory to release the built-up energy and heat and everything. It's from that, and that's what causes the volcanoes to erupt and whatnot. A crazy imagination. Russia took pyramids, and they um, hollowed them out. They built hollow pyramids in a laboratory setting outside and they began to plant crops underneath the pyramids and took the same exact type of crops, planted them on the outside of the pyramid. And in these experiments, the crops they planted inside the pyramid structure in the sacred geometry grew almost twice as fast and were almost twice as abundant as the ones that were planted on the outside in the same exact soil. So they found out that there's something to do with the angles, right? A accessing these angles or these angels uh, to accessing this higher dimensional energy mm. that feeds the third dimension that mm. can be harnessed and utilized by third dimensional life forms. Mm. And so, uh, you know, this is incredible because then that si same experiment was replicated many times. And we now know that a pyramid structure harnesses natural energy, right. not just harnesses it, but can actually transmute it into living things. I find this interesting because I do think that there has to be some kind of connection with energy and force with the shapes of pyramids and the reason why they built pyramids in the shapes that they did because, you know, technology back in the day is way different than it is now. They had to do things differently to work in their favor. And it just makes me wonder if that is the reason why the pyramids are shaped the way they are, aligned with true north, south, east, and west, and things like that. I also find it interesting about the copper builds that people are doing, and I have a subscriber that is working on something right now. I'm hoping that they follow back up with me on. I know you know who I'm talking about if you're in there watching, uh, but basically they said that they had plenty of copper wire laying around and that they were going to try to build something similar with like a crystal or whatnot. And I'll be very interested if they come back with a response of, you know, what the outcome is. I think that there's something behind it that actually does work, but I'm not sure. We'll find out eventually. Well, hi everyone. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, over the last couple of weeks, I've put out a couple of videos where I talk about conspiracy theory versus scientific thinking. And characteristic number four of science denial, and that is poor deductive reasoning. Well, it's a little bit more than that. A scientific mind is one that is fascinated by inquiry. It's a curious mind. Uh, if you see a rainbow, many people will say, well, that's a beautiful rainbow, but scientists will say that as well. And then they'll ask, I wonder what causes that. And then they'll look into it and they'll do some experimentation. Here we have the fittest flat earther and we have the pride of Canada, Colonel Chris Hatfield. Now, during his time as commander of the International Space Station, he did a demonstration for school children in Canada. And this is actually a pretty interesting demonstration. He got this washcloth and he soaked it with water and then he wrung it out in zero G. Let's have a quick look. So here's a soaking wet washcloth. Get the microphones. So you can hear me while I'm talking. And now let's, let's start wringing it out. There's a guy probably holding this with a green screen. It's twisting. really wet. You see with a green outfit on twisting this. Now, I'm going to show you all the dogs in these bubbles in a second here. Yes. Now, this is an interesting demonstration for a couple of reasons. Number one, as he wrings out the washcloth, notice how the water just kind of extrudes out of the washcloth. It doesn't drip. It doesn't float away. And more importantly, pay attention to the bubbles 
in the water. They're not going up, down, or any other direction. They're simply staying right where they are because they're in microgravity. The other thing that's interesting about this is how long this demonstration takes. Parabolic flight with an aircraft only gives you microgravity for 10 to 15 seconds at a time, maybe 20. He does this for over 30 seconds. The other thing that's very interesting is watching the capillary action pull the water up over his hand. These are things that are fascinating to a scientific mindset. Let's listen to what the Flat Earther thinks about it. So if you're seeing my videos for the first time, the liars of the world, they put dogs, dog CGI, in the lies of the world just to mock us, to say how dumb we are. Probably to mock God too, but I'll show you more in a second. Just clear shots here. You know, maybe if I show people this daily, it'll catch on more than it is. But here's a dog. Here's its little lips and mouth and nose and eye and eye. That's an intentional dog in their lies that they're up in the International Space Station. There's no International Space Station. Well, there's an International Space Station, but it's called an airplane up high in the sky and not in space. So while many of us that are watching this video are fascinated by the physics involved, he finds dogs in the bubbles because that's the sign of deceit by NASA. I really don't know what more to say about it. This is Bob the Science Guy. Follow me for more. I'll see you again soon. I don't believe NASA as much as I used to a while back. Like, NASA, I do truly think, is a company full of lies. Do they actually practice science? More than likely. They probably do for military reasons and other reasons that we aren't quite aware of. Probably for their own benefit and gain. But I do not believe that we are constantly up in space doing things. I think a lot of this stuff is staged in a way. And it's hard to explain, but some of it does seem fake. And there's a lot of videos out there that do debunk and show things that just seem a little fishy when it comes to what these astronauts are doing in space. Now, I'm not going to argue with Bob the Science Guy about physics and how everything works, and I'm not going to also argue with the Flat Earther on the dogs and the bubbles, because that one image that he showed, it did look like there was a little face of a dog in there, and I've recently learned that a lot of people put images of dogs, apparently it's mockery of God, by showing images of dogs in fake videos and things like that to just basically say ha 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 i'm mocking you and god type deal i don't necessarily know if i believe that or not but i have heard of that and i don't know i really don't know how to feel about space and things like that because there's people out there that say space is fake there's people out there that say space is real and it's really tough for me to tell until i actually am able to go into space i don't I don't know what to believe. I'm just kind of stuck in the middle. I'm literally here on Earth and not knowing what's really out there. You could leave a comment down below letting me know what you think is going on. If you think there is astronauts out in space or do you think that it's all false and it's just all Hollywood effects. Like, let me know in the comments. I'm definitely curious to know your thoughts. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.